You have probably heard of the saga pattern. It's one of the most important techniques for handling distributed transactions in microservices. But if you have ever wondered what it really means or how to implement it in real world systems like banking or e-commerce, this video is for you. I'll walk you through the two key styles of the saga pattern, orchestration and choreography, both using sequence diagrams and relatable use cases. Stick around because we'll not only explore how they work, but also when and why to use each. Imagine this, you're building a money transfer product. User A sends $100 to user B. In a monolithic application, it's simple. One big transaction, debit from account A, credit to account B. My transaction is completed, all within a single database transaction. If something fails, the whole thing rollbacks without any issues. But in microservices, it's a different world. Most of the cases, each service owns its own database. You might have a transaction service, an account service, maybe even a notification service. No more single atomic transactions. So, how do you ensure consistency across all these services when something fails midway? Enter the saga pattern, a way to split a distributed transaction into a set of local transactions, each with its own logic and importantly, compensating actions if something goes wrong. Let's start with orchestration pattern. Think of Saga orchestration like a symphony orchestra. There's a conductor, the orchestrator, who tells each service when to play its part. Let's walk through this real world flow using the sequence diagram. The client sends a request to transfer money, say from account A to account B. The orchestrator receives it and kicks off the saga. First, it tells the transaction service to begin a new transaction, maybe just storing an ID and initial status of it. Next, it calls the account service to debit money from account A. This is the first real action. What if this fails? Maybe account A doesn't have enough balance. In that case, the orchestrator marks the transaction as failed right away and informs the client. But let's say it succeeds. We move to the credit step. Now account B should be credited. The orchestrator calls account service again, but this time to credit account B. Now from here, it can either success or failure, right? Let's start with the success flow. If that works, we are almost done. The orchestrator marks the transaction as complete and the client is informed once transferred successfully. Now let's say the credit fails. Maybe account B is frozen or there is a timeout. The orchestrator steps in. It calls account service to compensate the debit, basically refunding account A. Then it updates the transaction status to fail and tells the client transfer failed but funds have been refunded. Now if you can think of pros and cons, starting with pros, it has clear control flow. You know exactly what's happening and when. Great for debugging and logging. But on the con side, if you can guess, it creates a single point of failure. The orchestrator becomes your mini monolith. If it goes down, the whole flow is blocked. One important note, this orchestrator can be a different service all in all or can be part of one of the microservices like either account service or transaction service in this example. Now let's move on to choreography pattern. Choreography works more like a jazz. There is no conductor. Each service listens to cues like events and plays when it's their turn. It's more flexible, more scalable, but a bit harder to follow. Now let's start with the sequence diagram again. The client tells the transaction service to initiate a transfer. Transaction service publishes an event to Kafka topic transaction.initiated. The account service listening to this topic event and tries to debit from account A. Now the fun part. If debit succeeds, it emits an event to topic transaction.account.debited. If it fails, maybe due to insufficient funds or any of the reason, it emits an event to topic transaction.account.debit failed. The transaction service picks this up and informs the client. Now let's resume from the debit success flow. If debit worked, account service then listens to the debit event and moves to the credit step for account B. Now here also there could be two cases. First one is success case. Account service emits an event to topic transaction.completed. Transaction service consumes this and tells the client all good. Now in the other case which is failure, account service emits an event to topic transaction.account.credit fail. Now with this event, we enter into compensation phase. Account service refunds the debit amount to account A and emits another event to topic transaction.account.debit compensated. This informs other services like transaction service that the original debit was reversed. Now moving on to pros and cons with this choreography pattern. It's super loose coupling. 
services are independent can be deployed separately and scaled and react to events in real time on to the cons debugging will be really tough tracing the full transaction means stitching together events across logs and you need strong guarantees from kafka like at least once delivery and idempotency in services now the big question arises when to use what if you want central control detailed audit logs and simpler debugging go with orchestration if you are building a highly distributed scalable system with lots of independent services choreography gives you flexibility many companies even mix both orchestration for critical flows like payments and choreography for notifications analytics and less sensitive tasks to recap the saga pattern lets us build reliable distributed transactions in a microservices world without the headache of global logs or two phase commit we explore two key patterns orchestration where one service controls the flow and choreography where services dance to the beats of events let me know in the comments which one you prefer or if you have implemented both in your systems and if this helped you understand distributed transactions better please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe which really motivates me to do more interesting content and thank you so much for supporting me this video will be the foundation for the next set of videos in my microservices masterclass series that's all for this video thanks very much for watching and i will see you in the next one